Okay. Hey everybody, it's Tiffany. Woo! We have one little hiccup, and that is that we are not broadcasting live in the Get Organized Challenge group. So uh, maybe Karen, you could throw up a post in the GOC and have people shuffle on over either to YouTube or live. Wait, Max thinks we might be getting live. We have about thirty. We have about thirty seconds, I think. What do we got, Max? I need to I need to practice my dance moves so I have something new for the warm up every week. Oh yeah, I need my own music. If anybody out there writes music, I need some jazzy, totally Tiffany music to get going. Okay, <laughs> I'm gonna start. Stop goofing off now. Welcome everybody to the piles of photos. I gotta start again. You know why? Because Max didn't hit the record button. What? Is he getting paid or what's the deal here? All right, everybody. This is for real. Oh, now we just had a studio like, wow, well, there's so many things. Okay. All right. Hey, everybody. Welcome to Get Organized Challenge number three. And we are going to talk about photos today. Piles of pictures. All of those pictures that just load up either physically or digitally or both. And really kind of the cool thing about this whole process is you're gonna use the exact same system digitally as you would use physically. So we'll talk about the differences in the two and, and, and how they're the same actually as we get in, but we're gonna talk about both, how to organize both today. So the first thing we need to start with though are the winners. So if you are new to the Get Organized Challenge, you want to join the Get Organized Challenge group on Facebook so you can put up a progress post. If you don't want to do that, I know some people aren't hip to Facebook, you can just email in a progress post. But every Monday night, Karen chooses from the progress posts. There's a random choice and two people who have posted their progress are going to win gift certificates to uh, the Totally Tiffany website and this week we had the ugly paper contest winners as well. So let's start with the progress post winners. And the first one is Angie Bandy. She says, what a start. Once I got all my paper in one place, I realized I had a lot more than I thought. Hallelujah, sister. But I dedicated 60 minutes a day to sorting and got through the stack. Woo! I also noticed some of my papers are at least 15 years old. And while I like them, I'm obviously not going to use them. So they are in the donate pile. Yes, we love purging. I already scheduled to attend a crop this weekend, so my reward is being able to pack more efficiently and with the lighter load. Thank you for continuing to offer this opportunity. Congratulations, Angie. Sounds like you made a lot of progress this week, and you're going to go to the crop and then figure out what you need, and then you're going to be able to spend your Totally Tiffany gift certificate. Woo! Okay, uh, second winner is Shirley Dillon. And Shirley says, I've been following GOC for several years. I always sign up and jump in whenever I can. I don't think I've ever gone from start to finish as planned, but I do what I can. I always learn something, even if I've completed that particular challenge before. Things change, new ideas, new products, what needs to be organized, and new thoughts on how to do it. In this week's challenge, something Karen said hit home with me. She talked about the cozy crop house that Kate said something to the effect of, I can let that go, or something to like that. I was... Uh, a CMC for many years and keep all my old lasting moments magazine and page patterns and a lot of stuff for my old creative memories days. I gave myself permission to let it go. Uh, the before and after picture of a cupboard now empty. I have tremendous feeling of accomplishment. Woo. And a lot more space. You know, that is really, really an important piece of the puzzle and actually comments in both, uh, from both our winners about just really unloading something. So even if you like them, if the odds are that you're not going to use them, most of us have so much stuff that even, I know you hear me say this all the time, even if you got to craft a little bit every day for the rest of your life, you'd never make it through all of those things. So purging gives you a lighter load, less stuff to dig through, less stuff to look through. So you can really find the stuff you want to work with more quickly, more easily, and get more done, have more fun. Invite more friends in because you're feeling extra crafty, all that good stuff. So congratulations to our two um, winners, Angie Bandy and Shirley Dillon. And our ugly paper winners, now you're going to have to go on to the Facebook page to see how ugly this paper is because we don't have a color printer, so I couldn't print it out to show you what it looks like in color. So the two ugly paper winners, Robin Weintraub Kramer and Chris Reed. And Karen will be reaching out to both of you with your prizes this week. Um, but everybody who hasn't checked out the Ugly Paper Contest, um, please 
take a minute and do that in the Facebook group. We also, because it's photo week, we're going to have the ugly photo contest as well. So as you're going through your photos, be sure you're setting aside that your ugliest photo that you would probably actually never scrap. Actually, now you might scrap it if it wins the ugly photo contest, though, then it might be worth keeping, right? So be, be prepared for that this week. What is our goal this week? Our goal is to have a strong system for organizing, storing, or sorting, storing, and organizing our photos, whether that's digital or physical, right? That is our main goal. Let's get those organized with a system that we can keep using moving forward. So what are you gonna need? For digital photo, you're gonna need some sort of organizing software, and there are tons of them out there. Most computers come with them. I, I get in trouble for saying this because I use a really old one that's not even supported anymore. Um, it's called Picasa, and actually mine just started to peter out on me in this last week, and some of the functionality is not even working anymore. So I'm gonna find a new one. I will post up what I choose for a new photo organizing software. But most computers come with, even if it's just Microsoft Picture Manager, right? So there are some good basic uh, photo sorting, but you need to know what that is and what you're gonna use. You need some sort of storage box for your printed photos. And we'll talk a little bit about those options. A perpetual calendar, either on your computer or in the real world. And then things like paper, folders, sticky notes, all the things that you're gonna use to label your boxes and also label the photos by group within those boxes. Pretty simple list. Okay, so the first thing that you're gonna do, step one is to gather all your photos together. Right, and they're stashed everywhere. There's probably a couple old packets of photos in your junk drawer. There's probably some in your nightstand. You know they're all over your craft room. So maybe there's some in the pocket of your car door, right, which is where mine used to always end up. Um, so dig around and try to bring all those together. Why do we do that? Why do we gather them together? Because you get this great sense of accomplishment when you have a big pile of something and you get it sorted out or get it put away, you get like that little brain, woo, I got that done. And you get <laughs> overwhelmed and frustrated when you keep finding them after you think you're done. So do the best job you can to pull all those things together, get them all in one space, and then we can work through that pile of photos in one space. Um, same thing with your digital photos, right? One of the nice things about digital, about photo software, organizing software, is that you can tell it to pull all the photos from your computer and it'll bring everything into those files all by itself. You don't have to hunt and pack around your computer looking for those. You just say, find all the JPEGs and it'll bring them all into one usually chronological file for you. And it's gonna bring in any JPEG you've ever saved. So if you save things like, I don't know, HSN logos off the onto your computer, it's gonna dump those in there as well. Uh, okay, so step two, physical photos. Avoid getting overwhelmed. Your first step should be to get your photos sorted into boxes, right? So at the very least, you're gonna take all those photos and you're gonna just put them into photo storage boxes, and then we're gonna work through each box, need to be sorted, to and from dates. Okay, so initially, it doesn't really matter how they get in there, right? We're just trying to take control. So your first boxes are gonna be labeled like this, right? Just says, these are ready to sort, need to sort, right? That's step one. Then the next step you're gonna do is sort by year, step two. Step three, sort the years by months or events. And then the last step is ready to scrap. So your photos are gonna work through that whole process. I think I have this Sterilite logo. I'm not promoting Sterilite for free. No, I'm just kidding, boom, right? Okay, so this is a great big tub. It's heavy, but it holds a ton of photos. You can use any kind of box to get those photos together. You just, if they're already in chronological order, that's great. If you have boxes that are labeled and you're finding more photos, you can put them into that chronological order. First step is gather them all together. Second step is get them organized just to and from dates and that they need to be sorted. Next step is that they're in that to and from dates and sorted. And then last step is that ready to scrap step. So that's where we're gonna really kind of get detailed on how we're gonna organize photos. 
it's weird not to have my computer. I usually just click through my things. One of the things that's really going to help you get your photos organized is to create a family timeline. And this was a suggestion that someone made years ago during the challenge. And I think it's brilliant. And it does make things easy. There's a lot of different ways to create a family timeline, right? You can do something as simple as this, just index cards with, you know, the year and then some basic information. You can do something, um, like this, if you just want to stretch it out along your wall and actually see that. So it's helpful. I know there's people who have used the wall of their craft room as a family timeline, and then you can add, you know, ribbon to different pictures or two different events, and it just turns into kind of this beautiful life collage on your wall that you can continue to add to. But when you're trying to journal or work on um, certain scrapbook layouts or scrapbook pages, it's nice to know. I mean, sometimes we find pictures of our kids when they're between the ages of three and five, and you're like, was he three or was he five? What's going on there, right? So the family timeline is gonna give you clues to what's happening in those pictures and how old your kids were, or where you were, what was going on. Um, so you can do something, index cards, you can do something on the wall. Last time we did the challenge, I started a family timeline in a, just, a, just a notebook, right? So I just, whoops, I just added, uh, little tabs for each year and then I could go through and just make notes and use up some of my stickers and other you know products and make it kind of cute so it's not it's not really a journal because all the information in it is kind of just quick bullet points but if I want to remember what year we went to China was that 2017 2018 2016 I can just flip to my little journal here or my little family timeline book and see all the different you know things and places that we've been. I just left a couple of pages. There's actually a blog post about this. I don't know if Karen um, has got that on the follow-up email, but if not, we will um, add it to the Get Organized Challenge page. But something where you can keep track of kids' ages, where you were, what you did, in just kind of a quick, easy bullet point kind of way, and that's gonna help you sort photos. And as you come across photos, it makes it easy to make a note as well, so that if you find pictures from a trip to Disneyland, you find two of them, that was in you know 2012, you can go ahead and write them on your family timeline, and then as you come across more from that same trip, you already know, oh, those go in 2012. So it's gonna help you sort and stay organized and organize more quickly once you get it done. And it really is super fun get your family involved in it as well doing that family timeline mine is kind of a little bit turning into a junk journal as well so I had this fantasy some of you know that I travel a lot for for work so I have all these boarding passes that I've been just hanging on to and I'm thinking oh those would make some kind of really cool like travel journal pages or something so those are just kind of all clipped in there I'm not not quite sure how that's gonna work, but it is fun. It can kind of be a junk journal, which is fun. But one of the things I love about it, I'm kind of on a tangent here, is that um, you can use your stuff, right? So you're, we're coming across stickers and die cuts and things that are old that we maybe wouldn't use, and they're just super fun to throw in there and kind of jazz up that timeline. But a family timeline is your next step, really important, and it's gonna make it a lot easier to um, sort and organize your photos. The next thing you're going to do is you are going to create some sorting guides. So once you've got your pictures sorted by year and you're ready to sort by into more details, then that's when your sorting guides are going to kick in, right? So sorting guides, these are ones I've been using over and over again. Um, this is the year. And then I just write additional information on each one of them and then I can reuse them. So um, and I have certain codes for certain things. So SB is spring break, right? One of the things about making notes and journaling is the easier you can make it on yourself, the more likely you are to actually do it. So when you are either writing on the back of pictures or adding sticky notes to the back of pictures with details on them, if you have some shortcuts that you can use, it's a great way to do it. So I always abbreviate spring break as SB. So this is where we went. This is 4th of July, what happened where we were in August, what big event in September. So as I'm sorting, uh, September of 2009 was Mike's wedding. So if I come across pictures from the wedding, I've got my sorting guide, it's really easy to be like, oh, that was 2009. I don't have to look at it and go, 
you know, when did he get married in 2008? Did he get married in 2010? So once you've got them sorted into, um, and you're ready to start sorting into scrapbooking, that's where this is really going to help you out, right? And then uh, different, got some different little notes here. What's at the bottom for me is really kind of the important thing. This is where I keep track of how old my kids were this year and what grade they were in. So LT, that's London, he was in seventh grade, moved into eighth grade, he had his 13th birthday, right? I don't know if you're, could just be me, but I'm always like counting. If he was born this year, what how, what year was, what was his birth date that, how old did he turn that year? I a little tongue tied today. Um, Max turned 11, he was in fifth and sixth grade, right? So any big events on your sorting guides, that's what you wanna put down because it's gonna make it that much easier to sort once you're by year to sort into piles of events. And that is what's gonna take you the next step to organizing for your scrapbooking pages, okay? So your goal is to get your first sort done, everything's in boxes. Your second sort done, everything is in year. Your third sort, you're gonna break down everything in those years by events. Um, and then you're gonna get them into ready to what we call ready to scrap. Uh, da, 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 da. I gotta, I'm kind of ahead of my presentation as I usually am. All right, so we're, we've got everything organized. Now you're gonna sort into your stacks and events and then you're gonna choose ready to scrap, right? So ready to scrap and I have a little kind of cheater project here to kind of go through this process. So these photos from uh, 2018 and when I'm getting ready to do ready to scrap, this is just one segment of 2018. I took a big trip at the end of the year and um, these are all the things that I wanna scrap about that trip. These are the photos. So when I'm ready to break this down into ready to scrap, I'm gonna use these to help guide me through picking those pictures for that event. Now, one of the steps that's really important when you get to this point of choosing your ready to scrap photos is choosing how many pictures are gonna fit on a layout page for you. So I choose six. This kind of freaks people out because they think, oh my gosh, what if I wanna put more than six? What if I don't wanna put six? Well, your brain loves to have an answer. It loves it. It does not like ambiguity. So if you say to yourself, my uh, number for per page per layout is six photos, then you know as you're going through those photos, you're going to choose six, the six best photos for that. So the first page in my uh, India trip is called getting there. So I am going to be able to choose six pictures getting there, right? Um, and that's gonna be, I'm gonna be able to check that off. I have these six pictures, right? I can put the rest of the pictures right back into chronological order and save them. I don't have to get rid of them. This is how I'm gonna segment things down and be ready to go when I am ready to actually scrap these pictures, right? So that one of the problems with not doing this is that if you say, okay, here's my photos from India, and you have to look through them every time you get distracted and sidelined instead of actually getting things done. Well, now if I say, okay, these are my getting there pictures, these six, right? I can check that off and add a sticky note that says getting there, okay? Next is Delhi, right? I'm gonna do one double page spread of Delhi. So I get to choose 12 pictures from being in Delhi. Boom, that's done. Once I've chosen all of them, I'm just gonna fold them into this piece of paper and I'm gonna put them back in. This piece of paper is too big for this box. One of the upsides to using the Sterilite box is that you can actually use a full size eight and a half by 11 sheet of paper. So now I've got those pictures, they're already ready to go. They're still in chronological order. This is really important. Don't separate your pictures until you are actually ready to scrapbook them. So you wanna put them into chronological order, get them all organized in chronological order, get them organized into events, and then start separating out photos as you're ready to work on them. But don't take them apart until you're actually ready to work on them. One of the other questions that I get all the time is, um, should I separate photos by kids, like 
These are all the pictures of London's. These are all the pictures of Max. Um, and I would again say, no, keep everything in chronological order until you are actually ready to work with it. So you can do some prep work, you can do some sorting and just put them right back in chronological order. And then when you think, oh, I wanna work on the India trip, you can go to that box and you're ready to go, right? But if you think, oh, I'm gonna work on the India trip, but you took all the pictures of Max in India and put them somewhere and all the pictures of London and put them somewhere else. Now you have to remember, oh, I've got my pictures, but now I need to go over here and get these pictures of London or these pictures of Max and pull them together into those pages. So keep everything in chronological order until you are ready to actually start working with it. You can uh, subdivide, group things together using that. I'm gonna put, I'm gonna do six pictures per page and put them back in the box. Or you can say, okay, I've got all the India. Today I'm gonna decide what I'm using in the album. And then you can, put that album kit together, bring it to your workspace if that's what you're gonna work on next, right? One of the things that happens with photos is there are so many of them that it's really easy to get overwhelmed whether you're looking at them digitally or physically. So it's important for your brain, for the sake of your brain, to bring one box at a time and just work one box at a time. It's one of the things that I actually recommend. Um, you know, generally my mantra is, easy to see, visible and accessible, but with photos, it's really easy to get overwhelmed. So it's the one thing that I say, go ahead and put those in the closet once they're labeled, and when you're ready to work on them, take one box out at a time. And you can even move them into smaller segments, right? So this box, this is a four by six fab file. If you're unfamiliar with fab files, they come with these uh, little plastic reusable file folders. So this is a trip to Disneyland. I work on three albums at a time. So you can see I've got them labeled M, LT, and Max. So these are mom, mine, London's, and Max's. So when I'm doing photo albums for all three of us, I'm working on the same pages for all of us at the same time. They're a little bit different, obviously. Um, you know, Max and London have their pictures of mostly of themselves as well as each other. I have pictures of everybody in mine. So the file folders in this little box, if I'm only working on that Disney album, this is all that needs to come to my workspace, right? I'm not overwhelmed by having these giant boxes of pictures. If for some reason I think, oh, I wish I would have chosen something else. These are from 2005. I can go to the 2005 box, Disneyland, and I know exactly where to go to find those photos because I have the dates, I have them in chronological order, right? So I'm gonna pull those out and I'm going to use them on my workspace. It's easy to store, but it makes it super simple to just go stay focused on whatever I'm working on. Also, your sorting, when you get to this point, right, this is a great place also to write notes journaling notes to yourself or whatever. So as you're planning that album or those pages, you can use your sort of guide for how many pages you're going to do. Um, and that free, it really freaks people out to think that they're gonna choose in advance of how many pages they're gonna do. But it really helps your brain. It helps your brain uh, settle in on the project and understand the scope of the project as well as if you're buying paper for a particular album, how many sheets of paper do I need, right? So for every double page layout I do, I buy three sheets, three sheets of paper because there's a good chance I'm gonna mess something up. But it's easy then to go, okay, I'm gonna do, you know, uh, what do I have on here? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Seven double page layouts of India if I want to go consistently with the background paper or the color or whatever, I know that 21 sheets is gonna get me through seven layouts, right? I do the math on that, right? Makes it simple to buy what you need as opposed to buying too much or worse, not buying enough and getting halfway through a project and not having exactly what you need to get that project done. Okay. There's always a lot of questions in photos. So um, if you have questions, Karen will be answering them if you type the word question, which I totally skipped, um, into the chat box. And um, if for some reason it's something she can't answer, uh, she'll bring it upstairs at the end of class. So. All right, work to the ready to scrap. Now, any kind of, I thought I had a little, well, I guess I kinda, usually have a little file folder that has everything on it, but use your papers to make notes, right, of what things are. One of the things about um, 
photos too is that it's pretty or it is subjective because it's a time no not subjective objective right there's no gray area um, so other people can help you and contribute so it might be great to get notes from your family what did what is their memory like and all those little journal notes can go right on your sorting guides for each event that you're working on I hope that makes sense I was kind of right in the middle of things okay so digital photos are the same way so with physical photos we got all our photos together which is what you're gonna do in your digital world you're gonna bring all your photos into your photo organizing software and then you're gonna sort within that photo organizing software by year and then within the year you're gonna sort by event so that could be somebody's birthday Christmas Mother's Day whatever it is try to be consistent with what how you're naming your file folders because with digital one of the upsides is being able to use the names of your pictures to sort and find <coughs> a bunch of related things all at the same time I'm, I'm going to talk about that in naming and tagging in just a minute but you're, you want to name your photos consistently so if you're always calling um christmas xmas as your photo name that are, when you want to line uh when you want to see all your christmas out christmas folders at one time you can do that because they're all named the same versus calling some of them christmas with the c and xmas with an s so try to stay consistent in not only how you name your folders but also how you name your pictures and we're going to talk more about that same process though um so when you're naming your photos you can they automatically have all jumbled up in the name when you download them they automatically have the date already in there right there's a bunch of numbers and then there's a bunch more numbers and those are the date so um, you've already got them dated but for most of us remembering a date is not what what day were you in Disneyland in 2009 difficult to pull that out if you can even remember that was the year right so I totally recommend leaving the date in there but tagging the photos um, also are naming the photos with some clues for what they are disney uh max birthday and i use bday as birthday and then i have different codes for different people in my life that i'm consistently using and that is where a perpetual calendar comes in so if you've never seen a perpetual calendar this is not exactly what they were intended for but <laughs> um a perpetual calendar has no days of the week so this is january it just has lines 1 through 31 this is also called a birthday calendar so the point of this calendar was that you could write everybody's birthday on it and then every year you would be able to um, remember birthdays and you could use it forever because it's not the day of the week right now we have facebook which helps us remember people's birthdays um, but i use this to tag my photos so New Year's Day, I always use the code NYD. If it's someone's birthday, I always use whatever code I've highlighted. So this is my sister, Tisa, right? And um, T-I-S-A, her real name is Teresa. So that's much shorter, so it's faster. But if I want to search for any photos I have of Tisa's birthday, I can just type in Tisa, B-D-A-Y, and it'll bring up all the photos I have of Teresa's birthday, whether she was it was her first birthday, which I wasn't born yet for because she sold with me, or it was her 55th birthday, which I think she just celebrated. How old am I? I think that's right. I think I'm 54, so she's 55. So, um, so it just makes it so much easier if you are consistently naming things the same. Um, so if I wanted to see all of Max's birthdays, it would, I would just have to type in Max BDAY and I would only get those if I just type in BDAY I'm gonna get birthday pictures of everybody or you could put BDAY in a year then I'm gonna get Max's birthday pictures in that year and London's and Tisa's and everybody else right so tagging your pictures and you don't it doesn't have to get super detailed it just has to be enough that you can search so what would you search for in those pictures and then tag them simply that way right you also want to stay consistent with if you're putting the date in yourself um, if you put the month day and year your computer is going to sort by the month first so you're not you're not going to get things in chronological order 
So if you want things to stay in chronological order, go year first, then month, then day, and you have to use double um, digits, right? So this is this is July, so 07 instead of just 7. And that way, if you sort chronologically, everything is going to stay in chronological order if you're looking at things by date. Just a little clue there for something to think about um, ahead of actually doing it, right? So all of these things are mistakes that I've made, like dating my photos wrong so that I couldn't sort them chronologically. So just a little bit of what I did, and you don't have to make the same mistake that I did. So perpetual calendar is very helpful for that. You can do that on your computer as well in an Excel document. It's just fast and easy to flip through that and see um, what you've got. Okay, so this week we have an ugly photo contest, as I mentioned earlier, and um, one of my favorite quotes about that is from Abraham Lincoln, and he said, um, there are no bad pictures, that's just how your face looks sometimes. So, which is true, but it is just how, Max is saying his face never looks bad in pictures. So, it's good to have the confidence of the young, isn't it? All right, so, here's your big mission for this week. Oh, I was gonna talk about, um, I was gonna do, well, I'll, I'm gonna talk a little bit, the flip and storage binder is on sale this week. So if you are unfamiliar with it, I was actually going to sort into it. This is a great uh, tool for organizing photos by layout um, when you are ready to scrap. So the pockets on the front are four by six and the pockets on the back are five by seven, which is not nearly as common a size for photos, but obviously four by six photos will fit in there as well. So if I go back to, if I was prepping for the India trip, I could take each set of pictures. So this, these are the getting their pictures, right? And each layout that I was gonna do, these are my getting their pictures. These are the pictures from Delhi. So when I was ready to, rather than using a fab file to organize these, I could do the same thing and have everything. So when I'm ready to do those pages, all ready to go. And then this is completely reusable, right? So you can put your notes in one of the pockets. I would just fold this up and put it in the pocket in the back. So I had my notes on what my plan was. And we're gonna talk more about um, plan, album planning and that type of thing in uh, challenge number seven, which is when we, which is called mementos and album planning and project planning. So we'll talk more about that. But in terms of grouping your pictures by layout and getting them sorted for your ready to scrap using something like the flip and storage binder. And these are um, on sale this week, buy one, get one half off. And if you are a member of the get organized challenge group, which I'm assuming all of you are, um, this is one of the specials that you can actually use your Get Organized Challenge Group additional 10% discount on. So um, if you want to organize in Flip and Storage Binders, this is the week to do it. Okay, so if you have questions that have not been answered, now is the time to ask. Oh, Max has questions. What do you have, Max? Uh, Kathy Morse asks, we document in our timeline book, should we include only physical photos as we organize them or should we add the digital as well? As, oh, that's great. That is a great question. Um, thank you. So Kathy says, I don't know if you could pick it up, but Mac, she's asking in your timeline books, should you document your physical photos or your digital photos as well? And that is one thing that I didn't, I totally skipped over. Um, absolutely. So if you have your pictures organized from your trip to India, whatever it is, you could just put a note in here that these are ready to go. They're in the box labeled, you know, 2019. And I have digital photos as well and where those are located. So that is, that's awesome. Uh, thank you for asking that. But you totally should think about your timeline as a way to, to connect things back and forth, right? We're going to talk more and more about that as we go through, which Karen probably talked a little bit last week. So big shout out to Karen. Woo! Thank you for teaching last week. Everybody had a great time. Awesome reviews on Karen's uh, paper class last week. So thank you, Karen, for jumping in on that. Um, I did watch a little bit of it. I was, HSN, so I was at HSN, so I could pop in for a minute. And uh, some of you saw me a few 
few little comments there, but that was awesome. It was super fun uh, for me to get to watch Karen because usually when she um, teaches, I don't, I'm doing something where I don't get to watch. So that was great. I was actually checking out Max's camera work to make sure that he was on the ball that day and he did an okay job. Okay. <laughs> so yes, anything like that, that is a great, great uh, comment. Anything like that, that you can put a note in your timeline that's going to tell you, and we'll talk more about this on Memento Week, where are the mementos for that? Where are the photos for that? Um, what other connections you might want to have to that particular event? Your family timeline is a great place to put that. So thank you so much for Kathy for bringing that up. Uh, any other questions? Chronologically. It doesn't matter if you don't scrapbook chronologically because you you still need your photos organized chronologically because that is how your brain works, right? So I don't know. Um, some of you have been around a while. The very first article I ever wrote about scrapbooking was for an old magazine called Snapshot Memories. Those of you who have been crafting for a long time maybe know that magazine. It was a Better Homes and Gardens publication. And it was called Scrap Traps, and it was the nine things, I think it was nine things, that stopped me from actually scrapbooking, right? These mental hurdles I had to get over. And one of them was that I had in my head that I had to scrapbook chronologically. That was how you did it. You had to do the old stuff before you got to do the new stuff, which was a bummer because the new stuff is the stuff you were excited about doing, usually. So I sort of had to get over that and say, give myself permission, something we talked about in the very beginning of class, give myself permission to do something different, which was scrapbook whatever I wanted, whenever I wanted, and then I could just integrate those pages in as, um, as they were completed, right? I can just, which is one of the nice things about like top loading pages, page protectors, is that you can easily slide things into chronological order in your scrapbooks, if, even if you're working out of chronological order. But the reason you want to put your pictures in chronological order is because it's the easiest possible way for your brain to find them, right? Your brain it works linearly, and it makes sense that if you needed something from 2009 that you would find it in a box marked 2009. And you can add uh, stuff to the front of your boxes if that's helpful. So maybe you want to put 2009 and then, you know, uh, SB, Spring Break and Moab, Disney trip, mom turned 60, whatever it is, on the front of the box, so that if you are wanting to scrap by um, event or something, you know, holiday or whatever, the front of the box is going to give you a shortcut to what that is as well, or what's in that box as well, especially if you have multiple boxes for each year. So, um, but keep things in chronological order, pull them out of chronological order and work with them, put whatever you have left over back in chronological order, and that is going to serve you well also. So one of the things I did when my kids were little, when I was better at keeping up with um, scrapbooking, Max is giving me the look, um, is after I was done scrapping, I would have these boxes that were in chronological order of pictures, and I knew that I had already taken what I wanted, and I was able to take those with me to my mom's or my mother-in-law's, and they could go through them and just pull out the pictures that they wanted. And my kids, when they were doing projects for school, they could do their, like, my personal timeline projects or whatever, family, all about my family or whatever it is. They could also get into those boxes chronologically and pull out what they needed. And because I had already scrapped those things, I was good about, like, it doesn't really matter. But because everything was in chronological order, it was easy to find. And as your kids get older and they get married, a lot of times, again, Max is giving me the look like, what? A lot of times at a wedding or before a wedding, one of the things that's kind of traditional to do is do kind of a timeline of your kids or put up pictures from, you know, birth till marriage, you know, at the event, different events that you're having. So it makes it really easy to get into your um, chronological boxes and pull those out as well. Again, you know which ones you've scrapped and which ones you haven't, which I want to go back real quickly to... Um, Digital photos, because one of the things that happens with digital photos is, and I, I usually have a big picture print out of it, but it didn't print. Um, you print the photos, and then you forget that you printed them, right? So in your digital files, you are going to go, uh, these are my you know Disney 2009 pictures, and if you add a big capital letter P, 
to that file name, then you know those are already printed. And if you need to leave yourself a note about where they are uh, in the 2009 ready to scrap box, or I put these in my crop tote or whatever it is, so that when you are looking for those pictures, you know these are already printed and where to find them. So with digital, you wanna make sure that you make that note, otherwise you'll end up printing them over and over again. Do you have any other questions, Mac? Oh. What about someone who's taking it? Uh, Joyce would like to know what she should do if she's not a scrapbooker. Should she work on stamp organization this week? Um, Joyce, if you are not a scrapbooker and your paper and your scraps are organized, woo, then you could absolutely. What do we do? What is next week? Can't remember. I need my little cheat notes. Maybe Karen can pop up a little comment and tell us what's happening next week in that realm of I think it's paper photos might be embellishments next week so embellishments are going to be um, usually a lot of work even for uh, card makers and they're, they're going to follow along that same four section system so if you want to kind of get a jump on next week you could pop in and um, to YouTube and take a sneak peek at last year's embellishment class and that would give you some direction if you want to get started on embellishments I'm impressed that you don't have any photos, even if you're not a scrapbooker. Although maybe they're all organized, right? If we just download our photos, here's my other piece of advice to you. Before you start downloading photos off your phone or off your camera, make sure you have time to actually put them in the right place, right? So often we download things off our devices right onto our desktop or into some open folder, or we download them into a file folder and we don't label it, and so it's almost impossible to find again. So before you sit down and download things out of your phone or your camera, make sure that you kind of have a plan about where they're gonna go and open the right folder or label the right folder and move it over because then you won't be. I, I, this comes about because at one point I downloaded my kids' Halloween pictures and the file that was open when I did the download was the dog's vet records and I could, because I downloaded them and didn't tag them or name them or label them, when I downloaded them, I had no idea where they went. And then when I downloaded new photo management software, at the time it was Picasa, Picasa went out and pulled all the JPEGs from all over my computer, and boom, there were those um, Halloween pictures. And I was like, where are those? And there they are, dog's vet record. So that's kind of crazy stuff. So put your things away in the right place the first time you'll be in good shape. All right, let's talk about this week's challenge since we don't have any more questions. Uh, the first thing you need to do first on your list is establish your physical and computer filing systems. So are you gonna use boxes, photo boxes? Are you gonna use Sterilite boxes? How are you gonna organize those photos? What are you gonna put them in? You're gonna create a family timeline of some sort. It can be funky and fun like a timeline notebook and we will put up, like I said, a link to that blog post about how I did that. Um, or it can be something on the wall, or it can be index cards. You just need something that you can refer back to so that when you're sorting photos, it's easy to make notes about what things happened when. Uh, your goal is to sort two boxes, piles, bins, totes, drawers, whatever they are of photos. Now, one of the great things about photos is that you can recruit people to help you. And I would really advise that, especially if you like do family home evening or game night or something substitute that out with family photo night and get everybody sitting around the table. Make sure you have a journal of some sort because what you remember from a family event is tremendously different than what your kids or your husband remember from that event. So you will get lots of good journaling notes and uh, memories from your family as you're sitting around sorting photos together. So make that your family home evening or your uh, family game night or Sunday after dinner or one of those things and get people recruited. They will, you'll get the work done and you will also get a bunch more um, insight into the event that you can, you can write down. So you're gonna add one additional box bin drawer tote for each family member that you recruit. You are gonna sort one year of digital photos. If you're still working on paper, you're gonna sort four inches of paper. Max has a question. What do you got, Max? I have two actually. Oh. Um, any tips for organizing photos from previous generations? I have no idea of year. Oh, gosh. One of the biggest challenges is as scrapbookers, you become the family record keeper and people hand over all of these 
bits and pieces of information to you and photos that are unlabeled and undated. And it really is, it, you have a question, what is it? No. It really is difficult to, um, it really is difficult to sort those out. So the best thing you can do is get them at family evening, try to get aunts and uncles, maybe grandparents involved in that and go through. But you'll notice how people look, how they're dressed, cars in the background, those types of things that are gonna help you at least get those things into chronological order. One of the best things that I've heard of anyone doing was taking those pictures, scanning them and uploading them to their Facebook page and then sharing them with their family members saying, who is this, what year is this, all of that, because you'll find that that is a great way to connect if people aren't, if you don't have grandparents or aunts or uncles in the area, it's a great way to get all those people involved. And again, you're gonna collect some stories with that as well. So if you have older generations from your family around that can help you, that's one way to do it. The other thing is when you post those pictures up on your timeline, maybe there's an advertisement in the background or a car in the background or something like that. And somebody that doesn't know who's in the picture will be able to say to you, oh, that's a 1957 Chevy or, oh, that's a Burma Shave ad from, you know, 1929 or whatever it is, because the different things that are in the background are going to tell a little bit about the story. And that is going to make your story even better knowing those tidbits of information. So get them out there on your Facebook page and your family page and um, you'll get answers. Another uh, question was, uh, where are you typing in these codes to bring up the pictures? Like, oh, the perfect. So um, all you have to do is get into your picture manager software and just in the search box, you can type in whatever code and the comma or space to and the next code. So if I'm gonna look for birthday, Max's birthday, I'm gonna go into the um, search box, type in Max, comma, BDAY, and anything that's coded within that uh, photo organizing software with those two terms is gonna come up. And again, if you just type in B day, you're gonna get everybody that has a birthday picture for every year, or if you've got your things um, organized, um, date, uh, year, month, day, you could also search birthday or B day 2009 or whatever. So it's just simple search function. And here's the other tip. You don't have to tag every picture individually. You just have to get the main, like, you just have to get the major ideas. So if I had birthday pictures of my sister that was a dinner party that we had for her when she turned 50 and my brother-in-law was there, my mom and my kids and everybody else, I don't necessarily have to put all that information. I'm gonna highlight all the pictures on that in that file and I'm gonna right click and rename Tisa, B-Day, maybe 50th, anything that I might search for and I'm gonna, and then the date is gonna be there, right? So I'm gonna tag all those pictures essentially the same. But I know that if I'm looking for a picture of Max at Tisa's 50th birthday party, I can just go to Tisa's 50th birthday and see and then find the picture of Max. So if you want to be um, committed to tagging, renaming each picture with everybody that's in the picture, you can do that as well. And then of course you can, when you're searching, it's even easier to dial it in. If you don't have time to do that right away, I would recommend renaming all of them and then going back and just picking a few of the pictures um, to specifically tag things that are in that particular picture. But it does make it really simple to find anything. Is that it, Max? Yep. Okay, so you're gonna sort one year of digital pictures. You're gonna start, I'm gonna start at the beginning. This is your challenge this week, people. Establish your physical and computer filing systems for your photos, create a family timeline, sort two boxes, bins, drawers, piles, whatever you've got of photos, unless you can recruit family members to help you and then you need to sort one more box, bin, drawer, tote of pictures for each family member that you've recruited to help you. You're gonna sort one year of digital photos. You're gonna sort, don't be afraid to delete things. I forgot to say that, right? You can delete all the pictures of things that you are that, that are pointless. Part of the thing with digital for us is that we think, well, it's free to take all those pictures and it's free to keep all those pictures. I don't really need to delete anything out. 
this is a great time if you know if something's obvious that you're never going to use it or never going to look at it again delete it out it's just like having 15 years worth of paper right you don't want to have to dig through 15 years worth of photos of things that you're never going to look at again just because you have them you don't want to label them you don't want them to take up space in your uh computer or your hard drive or whatever you don't want to have to dig past them so don't be afraid to delete pictures that you're never going to use it was different <laughs> when we had a roll of film and you only got 24 pictures on that roll of film and you would keep pictures that maybe were a little bit fuzzy or they weren't that flattering because that was all you had you don't need to do that anymore. So delete those out. Okay. Uh, sort four inches of paper if you're still sorting paper. Um, submit an ugly photo entry. You don't have to do this. Um, but you, you throw up your ugly photo entries. People will comment on them. If that doesn't make you very happy, then don't put up your ugly photo. It is all in fun. And we encourage you to participate just because it is fun. We have all taken ugly photos, whether they're ugly photos of ourselves or our offspring. Max says there's no, no such thing as an ugly photo of him. All right. Uh, post on Facebook. Post your progress on Facebook or email customer service at totally-tiffany with progress post in the um, subject line. And you will be entered into the progress post giveaway and then enjoy your reward, which is really, really important. Reward your brain and reward yourself for the work that you've done this week. All right, ladies, crafters, there's probably some guys out there. Ken and George, if you're on board with us, maybe Steven's out there or Michael today. Uh, big shout out. Hey, I don't know if the Tucci crew is working, is watching today, but if they are, glad to have you with us. Um, I'm gonna talk just briefly about the products that we offer to help you get your photos organized. It's a pretty quick um, little presentation. So if you're looking for ways to organize your photos, and we our products are mainly designed around, or they all are designed around when you're ready to make that um, move to the ready to scrap phase, right? We don't, we don't have any big boxes that are gonna hold years worth of unsorted photos, but when you are ready to actually get to that part of ready to scrap. We've got a couple of different options. Um, if you are unfamiliar with our fab files, which come in nine different sizes now, the first two fab files we ever came up with were specific for photo organization, and that is why they were designed unique to the fab files, which you saw earlier in the class today, are the, you get six of the plastic file folders, and these have a little pocket in the front where you can, um, slip in a little note card with all the details about that event. Um, you can also, on that note card, label the end, which gives you, this one's not full, so we'll see if you, what you can see on the camera, Max. Hard to see on the camera. You can turn the box on its back and then you can see really the details of what's in there. Getting there, the characters, the parade, the hotel, whatever it is from this particular trip. So it's kind of a fun little way to um, create a little library of things. So that comes in four by six and five by seven. And the five by seven also, oops, also has the same. Here's what the card, the uh, note cards look like when you first get them. They're just blank, but it's the same plastic file folder that's reusable. One of the nice things about the five by seven is obviously it'll hold four by six and five by seven, but it'll, it fits like most postcard sizes as well. So a lot of times when I travel, there's some beautiful landscape or uh, thing, building, whatever, that I want a picture of. And some professional photographer has done a much better job than I can. I'll just buy photo, uh, postcards from those places, especially if you're inside somewhere um, where you can't, where you're not allowed to take pictures. So then um, I'll get like a five by seven postcard and use that instead of photos and those fit perfectly in that as well. If you are organizing using the scrap rack system and you wanna use um, scrap rack pages to create and organize your photos, you can put six photos in each pocket. So I think of these as a double page spread. So this would be left side, right side, yes. Um, pictures, so as I'm again, uh, prepping for that album, I'm going to use this to organize three double page spreads. So that is the scrap rack 
perfect six page, four by six pockets, and then we also do the five by seven page. And again, five by seven photos, five by seven postcards are gonna fit in there with no problem, and also as well four by six, but you can group them actually by layout. So that makes it simple, and then keep them in one of our 12 by 12 binders, whether that's the canvas binder or the 12 by 12 craft binder. Um, we're gonna talk a little bit about more about this system when we talk in class number seven about mementos, journaling, and project planning. You'll see those again. And then, uh, last but not least, oh no, not last, but not least, will be last but not least. This is the Monica buddy bag. Many of you are familiar with Monica. She is a great way to organize about 300 photos. And again, just that bunch. I'm going to a crop, I'm only taking all my Disney photos or whatever. Something like this is perfect for that. It's gonna keep you focused at the crop, but you can get about 300 photos into a Monica bag. And again, use your sticky notes to segment out um, which layouts or which events or whatever they are. And then last but not least is the flip and storage binder, which again is perfect for organizing by layout, by category. You know, we talked about India. These are the pictures for getting there. Delhi, Mumbai, whatever it is that you did or you're documenting from that trip or event. You're gonna be able to group those photos together. So that is it for what we offer to help you get your photos organized. Um, you'll find all that information on our website and lots of links and stuff into the Get Organized Challenge um, follow-up email. If you are not getting the Get Organized Challenge emails and you believe that you are on the list, please email customer service at totally-tiffany and just put email check in the subject line and Leanne will look to make sure that you are on the email list for the Get Organized Challenge and if you are not, she will add you and she will let you know either way. Yes, you're on the list, please check your junk mail, which is where we might be ending up, or you were not on the list, but you are now, and then you should continue, and then you should get those follow-up emails after that. All right, thanks so much for tuning in today. Have a wonderful, productive week, and I will see you next week when I think we're talking about embellishments. Take care, everybody.